man of his word. I mean, we couldn't get him on at the bottom of the hour. He said, I'll be right back. And Carl Bernstein has come right back to chat with us. How are you? I'm good. Good to be with you. Legendary from, of course, Watergate. But, of course, you've done much more after Watergate. Does it, does it get irritating to say, you know, the Watergate guy? No, people are, are wonderfully respectful, I think, of what the Washington Post did in Watergate. And uh, It changed journalism, yeah. though, didn't it? I think it did to some extent. I think that what we saw in Watergate was that this, the American system worked, including what the press did, including what the Congress did, including what the Supreme Court did, including uh, Nixon's resignation. But, but let me make very clear to your listeners, Phil, that, that I'm here today as the author of A Woman in Charge, The Life of Hillary Rodham Clinton. There's a new vintage uh, paperback edition of the book at first uh, came out when she ran for president in 2008. Uh, it's considered, I think, the definitive uh, biography of Hillary Clinton. It's uh, it's empathic, and at the same time, uh, the Clinton folks sure think that it's overly critical. Uh, and uh, I'm here at the convention with CNN, and I hope everybody is watching this convention on CNN. Uh, so let's get that out of the way. But I'm happy to be with you and talk about the book. Well, good. Well, let's talk about that because what's changed since you wrote the book is Benghazi. Um, I'm not sure. I, I, Benghazi is part of the equation. And uh, what's changed since I wrote the book, and there's also an afterword to the book, is that she's been Secretary of State. And uh, Benghazi is, is part of that equation. Uh, I'm not sure that the Benghazi issue is resonating uh, in quite the way that, that the Trump or the conservative movement thinks that it is. It certainly uh, fires up the base. Uh, but I think the investigations in Benghazi have been rather exhaustive and complete in showing that there, there's no complicity uh, of Hillary Clinton of the sort that has been alleged by some people. That's not to say she wasn't Secretary of State at the time of Benghazi and, and the buck doesn't stop uh, with her and uh, certainly the Congress of the United States failed to adequately protect our embassies uh, in terms of appropriations and certainly the State Department didn't ask uh, for what, what might be appropriate in terms. But I think that, that much more important and resonant in the country than Benghazi uh, and it has uh, undermined Hillary Clinton's candidacy to some extent, uh, to a large extent, is the server question. But well, that's what I was going to ask you, because are they, are they sort of related in that if you didn't, if, if there was nothing criminal in Benghazi, but then, of course, Comey came out with the gross negligence thing. Could, I mean, are, I, I are they both similar? No, I think there, there really are very few similarities of it, except... Uh, is Hillary Clinton being the target of, of the right wing uh, in terms of Benghazi. And that targeting has not had a huge effect outside of the conservative base, whereas the server has had a huge effect on the perception of Hillary Clinton outside the Republican base. Uh, it has made her vulnerable in this election. I think if, if you look when she began her campaign with an interview with Diane Sawyer uh, back in April of 2015, the polls showed her as a figure of great admiration, uh, the expected nominee of her party in a walk. Uh, all that changed, uh, not just with Bernie Sanders' candidacy, but also with her lying. Uh, about the about the server and a good part of all the of, of a woman in charge the life of Hillary Rodham Clinton is the last three pages of the book begin since her Arkansas days Hillary Rodham Clinton has had a difficult relationship with the truth and one of the reasons <laughs> I think the Clinton uh, campaign in in 2008 had such problems with the book is even though they know the book is truthful. They know that it's accurate. They know that it shows her whole life and the arc of her whole life in a way that it really hadn't been explored before. Uh, her childhood particularly. I think, you know, that, that conservatives particularly uh, would do well to read this book to see how complicated a figure she is. She's not a simple wooden stick figure. Uh, and, and for instance, uh, what is one of the three pillars of her life? religion, always has been, never has worn it on her sleeve, carries a Bible with her 
almost everywhere, underlines it, looking for parables, was... Just doesn't want to swear on one. Uh, well, <laughs> uh, but went to, you know, without letting others know when her husband uh, was being impeached, uh, she was going to prayer group meetings with the wives of some of those senators that were voting to, comp- to impeach him mm-hmm. and convict him. Uh, she was a member of the, of the prayer groups with mostly conservative senators uh, when she was in the Senate. Never said a word about it. This goes back to childhood. Uh, she came under the influence of a Methodist uh, preacher, a young Methodist preacher, who came to her suburban hometown, preached not just the Gospels of Christ, but also of John Wesley, the founder of, uh, of Methodism, who preached, do all the good you can, wherever you can, whenever you can, for whomever you can. And, and that has been a part of her life since. People may not like her. People may think that she uses religion uh, sometimes to justify her, her actions in a way that, uh, that, that, uh, that people might believe is inappropriate if indeed she does that. But, but it's certainly worth understanding the dimension of religion in her life. Uh, so I think that what you get with Hillary Clinton is even though, and one of the interesting things about this election is we're talking about the two best known celebrities in the world, Donald Trump and Hillary Clinton. And they're both judged in terms of celebrity culture, uh, bigger than life, black and white, easy to, to, to understand. She's not easy to understand. And I She's think, a complicated and, figure. And I think if people were to really study her, they would have a much better basis on which to either support her or oppose her. And that's really uh, what the book does. There's a, a chapter of it online. If you go to Vintage Paperbacks uh, online, vintage.com, I think it is, there's a chapter about her years uh, at, at Wellesley online, which again is fascinating about the formation of this woman who was a Goldwater girl. Mm-hmm. Remember, a lot she, of people forget she, that. Yeah, she took when she went to Wellesley College. She had a copy of Conscience of, of a Conservative in her in her in her uh, suitcase. So, uh, in this campaign, in this election, when the stakes are so high for the country, it, it really. And I talked about the election today on CNN in terms of really uh, the definitive battle, perhaps, of the culture wars of the, of the last 30 years. And the Clintons and Hillary, of course, have been in the crosshairs of that cultural warfare for 30 years. That uh, we need to know about these candidates. Yeah. And, and I've said this on CNN many, many times. We, we need people who are voting to understand the lives, the records. Uh, of both of them, and they're not going to just get that uh, by being lazy. And, you got to do your and, research. And do the research, and I hope people will read this book uh, and make up their own minds. Uh, and I think uh, that, that Don Hewitt and I were talking about this, that, 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 uh, that there is a real need for people to get beyond looking for information that they think is going to buttress or reinforce what they already believe. And it, it is possible, maybe, to have a fact-based debate if you if people do that. But thus far, very few people seem interested in that. Yeah, don't be afraid of the truth. A woman in charge, Carl Bernstein, appreciate it very much. Thanks for dropping by. And it's also on Kindle, and uh, I hope people read it. And uh, I'm happy to donate the proceeds of, of, of this broadcast to something worthwhile, <laughs> uh, just because it'd be great if people... Uh, do continue to really do the research that they, they ought to be doing. Thank you very much for dropping by. Good to see you. Good to see you. Thank All right, you, very sir. nice to meet you.